Hello there and welcome to Complete Games. I'm James and this is Valheim and we continue. This time we're going to be taking on the first of the Forsaken bosses, Ethica. But before we do that I just want to go over some upgrades. We're going to need to make some upgrades to both our armour and equipment. And I would like to put a fence down around the perimeter of our base before we take on this first boss. Between episodes I've been gathering resources of course. And skills wise we just take a look at our sheet here 22 points in bows 35 in wood cutting and uh, yeah we've been doing a considerable amount of lumberjacking just come inside here i've just added some signs above our chests just helping keeping everything a little bit more organized and i've added these chests here for our cooking ingredients over here is our hide chest now Hide has been difficult to come across. Well, I say difficult, but the boar hide doesn't always drop. However, we always get some deer hide back from every deer we kill, but the boar, the ragged scraps, they're just harder to come across than normal leather. So in hindsight, I probably shouldn't have upgraded our rugged leather tunic just to get one more point. I should have held out for the leather pants and the leather tunic and we just needed the tanning rack to be able to make these. So I'll make them both now, and that'll bring our armor up to level six. And yeah, I think basically hold out and save your boar scraps for better things rather than making upgrades to the basic tunics. So there we go. So we got a defense of six now. Okay. So upgrades wise, well, I think I'm going to try and upgrade as much as we can. We've got a level three bench. We need bone fragments to make upgrades to our armor here, but certainly want to think about doing the crude bow. If we can get that up to a level three, that's just going to require wood. I'd like a decent bow because fighting Ethica, I plan to stay well back and fire arrows. Definitely ranged is the way to go on the first boss. Okay, what else we got here? We may as well put this armor away. So the level three bow. In fact, we could just upgrade everything we can. I'm gonna need to craft some arrows, so I'll just drag everything across. There we go, we're gonna need some flint. Uh, what we got down here, some resin, take these feathers, finding plenty of them from the seagulls, just stand still, they're easy enough to shoot, got some resin there, again resin's very easy to come by so crafting the fire arrows are pretty effective, okay so upgrade wise, let's do our hammer. For the hammer we're going to need some stone, which I've got plenty of in here. Okay, oh, and you can see we're actually encumbered here, and I like the fact that you can still move. You can see our stamina bar just going down here, so it makes it useful for just lugging things around when you're doing a bit of crafting like we are here. So the flint up, ah oh, there we go, so we've got the wooden shield. Let's upgrade that first. In fact, I'm liking the wooden shield over the tower shield. It has a knockback effect. We can take that up to level three. We will do. Uh, the flint axe, we will upgrade that again. Crude bow, crucially. Try and get this one up to level three as well. Hammer, we may as well do. It's not that difficult to take it up to level 3, so we'll take it up again. Just a bit of stone and wood required. Okay, um, the flint knife. Haven't really experimented with it too much, but it really does get a bonus to backstab. So, if we can get our sneaking ability up, do some backstabbing, it's very effective. Certainly preferring the wooden shield over the tower shield. And 
I'll go and have a look for some enemies outside in a moment and I'll just show you how the knockback effect works. That's about as far as we can go. We need a level 4 bench in order to make any more improvements to our bow. Okay. So we're going to need some arrows. Just going to craft plenty of them. See how the fire arrows fare. I think we've pretty much gone as far as we can. A bit more wood here for some flint arrows. Grab plenty of them as well. Doesn't harm to have extra. I don't want to be in melee combat when we fight the boss. I also want to be well rested before we take on the boss and I say I would like to put a fence down around the perimeter. Double check there's nothing really that we want to upgrade. Again we're going to need more boar hide. More deer hide as well. So we'll go out and we'll do a little bit more hunting. We'll just upgrade the knife to a level 3. I haven't really done much in the way of knife fighting yet so I need to get that up and put some skill points into that. So I need to practice sneaking. I'm just going to craft some wooden arrows as well. There's no point in using the good arrows on the deer and boar. haven't experimented with the spear as yet. Kind of liking the axe and shield combination for melee and the arrows for range combat so at the moment I'm mainly focusing on our bow especially as the first boss we're gonna fight is gonna require us really to stay at ranged Okay, so I'll just put as much of this away as we can. Just eat some food. This also brings our stamina bar up as well as our health points, so may as well stay well fed. So just down at the front here, you can hear them, but there's some what they called necks. And these creatures, they're good for cooking. They give you quite a few points back for cooking their tails but unfortunately they don't drop any hide there's always plenty of them here I'll just show you the shield block you time it correctly and they will bounce back I actually used the shield on my neck before all of them there we go managed to knock it back that time all of the enemies have a different time to them so it's just a case of practicing it is a good way to practice blocking a little bit too early on that one there we go so it's kind of like Zelda Breath of the Wild you just got to get that timing right some neck over there Ooh, just missed it just a tiny bit higher there we go I'm not even going to gather that tail I just want to shoot saw a boar over here so See if we get any leather scraps back from it. Sometimes we only get one meat, nothing else. I think that's a seagull landed over there. Try and show the shield off a little bit more. We can find something else to fight. So I'll just show this off with the Graylin. Now, if you want to level up shields, you just need to stand there. But it's just the knockback that the round shield has. The tower shield doesn't have it, but it can take more damage. I'm much more favouring this one. So that's enough of that. It's a good way to level up just playing solo you haven't got anyone to practice against 
Okay, so I need to put some sort of fence down. I'm thinking somewhere along the back here. In fact, I've got all the wood ready just here. And I just want to say, make sure that if you're stacking your wood piles up, make sure you repair them before you actually gather the resources back because they do deteriorate and you get less back. You want 50 back per stack. It's just as easy to put them in chests. But there we go, we've got a full 50 stack. And oh, some boar over there. Can we hit it? I think. There we go. Oh, nice shot. I'm loving the bow and arrow. certainly think I'm going to build my character definitely very much bug dependent. There we go. No, nothing back there. Oh, there we go. Some meat and some scraps. Okay. Let's get this fence down. Okay, so it's been several in-game days and I've managed to get a fence perimeter down. So I'm just going to go and walk you guys along it. Nothing fancy at the moment. I've just used basic fence and it was easy enough to do. But I may have bitten off a little bit more than I can chew because I have gone quite wide with the perimeter fence. Now it comes all the way down here. I figured we're most likely going to get attacked on this side because the Black Forest is over there. And I think that we'll probably maybe funnel them into that little river there. I can certainly get the high ground there. Got a set of gates over here and I'm thinking on top of this hill we can put some sort of structure to fire from. Just gives us a little bit more defense. Perhaps put some ramparts up there. The fence continues all along the back of this woods here. It's taken me quite a long time to actually lay all of this down. I say it's probably quite a lot to protect on our own and it's not quite finished yet I haven't entirely gone right down to the bottom so things can still get in from one side the fence for the time being we'll just finish at the bottom here at this cliff um, we're still open to attack from this side but I will gate it off and more worried about things coming in from the other side of the base from towards the Black Forest than this end. But we'll get there soon. It's only a basic fence and perhaps we've bitten off a little bit more of the area than we can manage. But for the time being, I'm happy with what we've got. So I have marked where the boss is on the map. So I'm going to head on down there and we'll summon Ethica. So if we just stick two of the trophies on here. And nothing happens. Do we need to put them on the sign? Oh, this is how we summon them. Can't eat more cooked meat. Um, oh, I've put cooked meat on my hotbar. <laughs> I meant to put the trophies on the hotbar. Start again, James. Okay. Right, this should summon Ethica. Okay. So the key here is we're just going to stay ranged. It's got a few area of effect damages that it can do, so I'm just going to use the stones and keep distance between it. It can shoot its lightning attack through trees, so I think really we just want to stay around these stones. There we go. You can see how good the fire arrows are at the moment. Pretty much take everything out in one hit, but I can see it just tick down for a little bit there. I don't think it's worthwhile swapping between the two arrows all the time. But yeah, that's one of its lightning attacks. The fire arrows are definitely a good choice here. target as well. Just going 
keep that altar and a few of these stones between us. Keep an eye on our stamina bar as well. As long as we're drawing the bow, we're using stamina. It hasn't managed to hit us yet. Just a few shots here. James. This again. What's it doing? Come back over here. It's better. Oh, okay. Just need to get out of the way of that. Okay. It's definitely chasing us now. That's the other attack it's got. Again, that's why I think it's much better to keep this one at distance, especially when you're a low level. It's the first time I've soloed it and did it with a group. So I'm sure the enemies are scaling, so I'm hitting it quite hard at the moment. Okay, just hear it behind us. I want to get near these trees. I really want to fight it here and around these stones. Stamina's low. That's close. Just keep behind this stone here. Almost got it. Haven't really managed to get many hits on us. So that's definitely the way to take it out. Ranged and running around these stones. In fact, even walking round, can it keep up with us walking round? Ah, there we go. I think we can even just regen our stamina just by walking around. Can it actually get to us? No. And then just put the altar between us and boss down and before that we're going to get a couple of its antlers and we're going to be able to craft a pick there we go new crafting recipe new materials antlers so now we can finally use a pick a oh, couple of mushrooms here we'll take them so We'll take the artifact back to the stones. In fact, we're right across from them. Hug in here is just going to tell us the same thing. Head over towards these stones. There we go, just through the forest here. Of course, it'll be different on all maps, but be somewhere close to where you spawn in, I suspect. Okay. Well, that's one boss down. And just need to stick it on the hot bar. Why is it not doing it? Have I got the... Just get rid of this neck. Oh, dear. Right, we won't chase it. We won't chase it. Okay. Let's try the trophy. I've got the wrong trophy on there. Do we need to... I just saw it then. Attach item. I'll just get closer. There we go. Attach item. And there we go. The Epica Stone is now activated. Fantastic. And that's the first of the Forsaken bosses defeated. And with it, we're going to be granted a power... In order to claim that power, we need to come over and click on the stone. So if you'll notice, just in the bottom left hand corner, we'll have a new tab that says Effica Ready. There we go. So I've just hit the F key and this just gives us a short boost to the reduction in running and jumping. So 60% reduction in the cost of stamina when running and jumping just for a short while. So this is going to be useful if we need to escape a group of enemies we can't handle 
or perhaps we just want to use it to cover a great distance over a map. It does have a 20 minute cooldown so we can't exactly spam it, but a useful ability to have. More useful than that however were the two antlers that the boss dropped and with it we're going to craft that pickaxe. So in the next episode we're definitely going to be venturing out into the black forest. As well now that we've got the pickaxe we can actually do some upgrades to our base. That viking hall that we couldn't quite straighten the surface on we can now expand and take away some of the mountain and level out that terrain so we will be able to make some extensions to our viking hall. And of course if we venture into the black forest there's going to be some new resources to find there. I'm hoping to find some tin and some copper and hopefully we can get a forge up and running and start crafting some more advanced tier equipment and out in the black forest as well there are some dungeons that perhaps we can explore so we'll wait until the next episode and we'll venture out into the black forest don't forget to subscribe if you're new here and you're enjoying the valheim content from myself but until next time i'm james from complete games and i'll see you